In off-road triathlons, it's pretty common that you're going to need to get on your bike more than just once after transition one. It's going to be two or three or four times for a couple of reasons. Either the race requires it, like an Xterra rock hopper out in Arizona, there's a tunnel section with two-way traffic that's too dangerous uh, in, terms of, in terms of injuring people. So you're actually required to dismount and then walk slash run your bike through the tunnel and then get back on. You have to do this twice per lap for a total of four times. Another example is in a race where it's very technical, goes uphill quickly, um, and it's all rocky. And so a race I'm thinking of actually is Xterra Renegade out in California. Where there's this one section uh, that you have to do twice during the race. So that's a total of three times you might be getting on your bike. And myself included, there's lots of people who are not able to make it all the way up that section without having to get off the bike and either walk slash run slash carry the bike for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute or two or whatever the case may be, then you're getting back on the bike. So long story longer here, you need to know the way to get on your bike as fast as efficiently as possible. So I have got three ways to get on your mountain bike right now. Hey, it's Eric from UWG Try, and if you want to get better at triathlons, hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any more weekly free videos. If you have made it this far into this video, then you know there's an art and a skill to getting on that mountain bike after transition one and getting out onto that course. Gone to the days where you had a kickstand on your bike and you just walked over, kicked it up, got on your bike and pedaled away. As I said, in many races, you might have to get on and off your bike, so these rules could apply. But that doesn't happen in every single race. So the one time that you absolutely have to do it is when you're coming out of transition one and you can't ride your bike in transition. I'll put a link in the upper right that talks about the rules uh, of biking. But as you're walking and running out of transition, you're going to come to a line. Sometimes it's chalk or painted or there's just two volunteers. There's going to be some sort of line. Thank you, volunteers, by the way. We wouldn't get through triathlons without you. You come to that line, they're saying, Pass this line, pass this line, you get past the mount line, represented by these uh, two wonderful uh, couple of sticks that I've put in the ground here. Uh, it's a very high quality uh, video, but for all practical purposes, here we go. You pass that mount line, and that's when you get on the bike. Now, you always want to move to the right because if they're, as a general courtesy, so everyone's speaking this sort of the same bike language, if you ever need to pass someone or they need to pass you, everyone's going to pass on the left side. So if there's no one there, move to the right so you're out of everybody else's way that's coming from behind you. You don't have to look back. You can just move to the right. So if there's somebody on the right side, you'll pass them on the left. Now, if it seems to be kind of crowded and there's a lot of congestion, don't just stop right after the mountain line, right in the middle, if there's someone on your right or your left or whatever. You can actually move past them. I know you want to get on the bike as fast as possible, but if you go an extra five or 10 feet or meters, pass someone that's on your right, and then get over to the right, then you can mount your bike there. It's, you'll lose a couple seconds, but it might be less stressful. You won't upset anybody else that's coming behind you that's faster, um, and it's just easier uh, to do it that way. Okay, so as you're moving towards that mount line, you're gonna, always gonna be on the left side of your bike. You never wanna be on the right side of your bike, because you might end up cutting up your feet or your legs uh, you know, on the chain. So always stay on that left side of your bike. And these three ways to mount your bike can be used if you have pedals that clip or pedals that don't clip. Doesn't matter, it applies to both. So the first way, as you come to a stop, after crossing that mount line, you throw your right leg over, put it right onto the pedal, and push off. What you could also do, if you're not comfortable with that, is you could throw your right leg over, put it on the ground, and then push off with your left leg. So this way is a bit slower, and you run the risk of hitting your chain ring doing this, and so I'm not really a fan of this. I recommend putting that right leg over, putting it on the pedal, and pushing off. So just practice this a few times, you'll have the hang of it in no time. Number two, okay, so I used to do it the first way until I saw someone else doing it the way I'm about to tell you, and I was like, well, it's way faster and more efficient and smoother. So now I do it that way, and I wanna pass it on to you. This way is a little bit more difficult as you're actually not gonna to come to a stop. You're actually gonna be slightly moving as you put your left foot on the pedal and push down, and as you start to move, you swing your right leg over onto the other pedal, and then away you go. So as you can see, this way is pretty smooth. Uh, with a bit of practice, it gets you uh, out of other people's way quickly and onto that uh, bike course. This is my preferred way now. This is the way that I use in all the races now. 
Now the third and final way is the most difficult, but also the fastest to get you uh, out onto that course. What number three is, is actually the flying mount, where you're walking, running with your bike, and you don't even put your feet on the pedals, you just go right to jumping up onto your seat, uh, and then pedaling away. I don't use this way because I just had too many close calls uh, with potential falls or injury or even discomfort up out there in the course that had nothing to do with my legs. Um, so you can also do this uh, flying mount way with your shoes already on the pedals. This is extremely common in a lot of the road tries. Uh, with off-road tries, the terrain quickly becomes uh, bumpy or uphill or technical and so uh, unless you have enough time to get your feet in those pedals quickly, which a lot of us do not have that uh, ability uh, to, take, to take one hand off the uh, handlebars while you're going through bumpy terrain, if you can do it, fantastic, because it is a little faster, it'll save you some time, um, but that's the alternate way you can do it. So those are the three common ways to get on your bike uh, during a, an off-road triathlon. So to sum up, the first way is to just stop your bike, throw your leg over, and start pedaling. Number two, my favorite, is while you're still moving, you actually put your left foot on the pedal, push off, get going, swing that right leg over. And the third and final way is to actually do a flying mount where you don't touch the pedals, you just jump onto the seat. You can do this with your shoes on or to make it even more difficult, uh, you have your shoes already attached to the pedals. Which if you noticed, I didn't show you an example of because I don't want to do it, can't do it, end of that. But it is pretty impressive if you can do it. I hope that video was helpful for you. Put a comment as to one, two, or three, which method uh, do you find works best for you in your off-road triathlons? And if you try a new one, uh, let us know how it goes. As always, there'll be a new video next week, and that one will be, yes, you guessed it, how to actually dismount from your mountain bike as you're entering uh, into transition two. So until then, I will see you on the trails. Next to a rock, hop, rock hopper out in Arizona, is it like a rock, rock hopper out in Arizona? <clears throat> also, the most 